Hi everybody, this is a video recording for Lab 8, the sheep frame video for Bio 168. We are going to begin the dissection by looking at the dorsal view and finding the structures as found on your handout. The first item is the dura mater. The dura mater is this hard outer covering. It's the outer layer of the cranial meninges here. And if you look at it, it looks a little bit like one of those semi-transparent plastic garbage bags. And it covers the entire brain and the underside as well. And you can see it here. The next item on the list is the pia mater. The pia mater really is a very thin surface coating of the brain that follows and here's a better example of it right here you can see a little bit of it peeled up a little bit it's a very thin fine coating and pia is delicate or uh, well delicate whereas dura means hard and it basically follows all the grooves and the shapes of these sulci and gyri so as you recall the gyri are these convex sections of the brain and the sulci are the indentions in between the gyri. And so the pia mater follows the, the contours of the gyri into the sulci. The next structure that we're going to find is the pineal gland. The pineal gland is one that if you open up the back of the brain like this and you move the cerebellum away from the cerebrum, I'm looking for a better example of a pineal gland here, but if you sort of separate along the transverse cerebral fissure, you will find a little structure. In this case, you can see it right here. It's actually a little bit easier to see in the sagittal view, it's right here. And in some cases, you can look and see from the rear view, this little thing right here that sticks up above this structure, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So this is the pineal gland right here. Also of note, if you want to see the posterior view of the pineal gland, the lab manual has a nice picture of the complete brain or the whole brain with the cerebellum pulled down um, in which you can see the pineal gland. The next structure that we're going to look at is the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus that is closely associated with this. Right below the pineal gland, you see this large bump here? This is the superior colliculus right here. In the side view, it's right here. The inferior colliculus is the smaller of the two bumps and the inferior of the two right here. There are two on each side. There's a superior colliculus on the left hemisphere and a superior colliculus on the right hemisphere. So there are two superior colliculi. There's an inferior colliculus on the left hemisphere and an inferior colliculus on the right hemisphere. Together, the entire thing is called the corpora quadrigemina and the word colliculus means little hill. So you can see they're like little bumps or little hills. So the superior is the larger of the two and the one that is obviously in the superior aspect and then the inferior colliculus is the smaller of the two. I'll try and come in over your thumb here to get a view of the one side of the colliculi. Very nice. The next structures that we are going to identify are, is the cerebrum. This whole part is the cerebrum. This is the left hemisphere. If you take two of these together, then you get the entire cerebrum. But remember, it's divided into left and right hemispheres. So the cerebrum is the largest part of the brain, and it's the part that is covered in these sulci and gyri. Then we have the cerebellum. The cerebellum is the part right beneath the cerebrum, and it has these folds in it called folia these little folds in here. And the cerebellum has gray matter along the outside, or along the cortex, but then you have this white matter part of the cerebellum that looks like a tree with all these branches, and it's called arbor vitae, which is Latin for tree of life. And all of this in here is white matter, and notice that it's a paler color than the surrounding gray matter that, that lies over top of it. The last structure in the dorsal view is the transverse cerebral fissure. The transverse cerebral fissure can only be seen when you have two hemispheres together, and that is the fissure that separates the two hemispheres. So this would be the 
Well, that's, that's a longitudinal. longitudinal. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, a longitudinal. Sorry, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. The transverse cerebral fissure is going to separate the temporal lobe. Oh, the transverse cerebral. We already went over that. Transverse cerebral fissure. That's what's going to um, delineate the cerebrum from the cerebellum. So it is the transverse across the back here, the posterior aspect, the that delineates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. So if you look at it like this, it is this fissure right here. Okay, great. Then we can move to a mid-sagittal view. Wait, we didn't do the longitudinal fissure yet. Oh, okay. The <laughs> longitudinal fissure separates the left and right hemispheres. I did jump ahead of myself a little bit earlier, sorry. So this is the longitudinal fissure right here. Okay. Okay, the, the mid-sagittal view, the first structure is the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is this white matter tract that you see here. So this is part of the corpus callosum. Then we have the fornix. The fornix is the one on the underside of that, below it. It's also a white matter tract. Usually they're not intact on these brains. So here it is here. You can see it a little bit here as well. And do we have an example of the septum pellucidum? This is the septum pellucidum, and it is the thin wall of tissue that separates the lateral ventricles. So if you go on inside of it and you flip the septum pellucidum back, you can see into one of the lateral ventricles here. So that is a lateral ventricle. And the septum pellucidum is this thin wall of tissue that separates the two lateral ventricles. And then we have the lateral ventricles, which you've been talking about. There, what's inside, the space inside there. And we have already discussed the cerebellum and the arbor vitae. The last structure on the mid-sagittal view is the pons. The pons is this little bulge right here. This is not the best example I could find of it. It was the first one I picked up. This is the pons. Let's see if I can find a better example of it. Here's a better example of it right here. And you can see it from the underside as well. Yes, that takes us right to the ventral view, which has the next list. And we can start by looking at the optic nerve on the ventral side of the sheep brain. Okay, the optic nerve. This would be this thing right here. And it's leading from an eyeball to this structure, which is where the optic nerve on both sides come together to form the optic chiasm. I'm gonna try and come in on top of that. So this is the optic nerve, and it comes into the optic chiasm right here, which you can see very clearly in the sagittal view as well, the optic chiasm. Okay. And then we also need to locate the olf olfactory bulb and olfactory tract. The olfactory bulb is this part right here on the very ventral anterior aspect of the brain. The tract is the white matter that leads away from it. Sometimes we get, this one is kind of torn a little bit here, you can see that, but that's the olfactory bulb. It's the part that bulges out. And then the white matter tract that leads back from it towards the brain is the olfactory tract. The structures that you've talked about a little bit already on the ventral view of the pons, the medulla oblongata, and the spinal cord. The medulla oblongata is here. It's just posterior to the pons and the sheep brain, so all of this is medulla oblongata. And then once you get down here, once it tapers and narrows down, and you get past the cerebellum, it runs into the spinal cord. Can we put two hemispheres together and see the ventral view of the pons and the medulla oblongata and the spinal sure cord? We have two brains that actually fit together, unfortunately, but we can get an idea. We can get an idea. Um, well, you can sort of see them here. They're different, but here's your pons. Here's your medulla oblongata right posterior to it. And then you have your spinal cord right here where I've got my fingers. Mm -hmm. So pons, this little bulge here, medulla oblongata, that's this part, and then the spinal cord. Okay, and that What are... about the fourth ventricle? Would they do need to do that, right? The fourth ventricle is uh, not on the sheep brain model, but it's okay. good to show. And 
I think it's helpful to show a sagittal view of the pituitary gland in reference to the optic chiasma because they can often be confused. Here's the pituitary gland. I notice it's being pressed pretty close up to the, the uh, rest of the brain by the dura mater here. Usually it sits in the cella tersica. That's what the thing, the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone, that's what it's for. It's to hold the pituitary in place. And this is the optic chiasm and right behind it we have the pituitary gland. Those are all of the structures that we need to identify on the sheep brain.